بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته ما شاء الله الله تعالى bless all of you for attending um, just before we call upon our honorable guest I just like to make a quick announcement in relation to ما شاء الله uh, a group of youngsters lads from our masjid they arranged to climb the highest mountains in Scotland England and Wales over the bank holiday to raise funds for our mill project with no previous hiking experience alhamdulillah they successfully completed Ben Nevis in Scotland on Thursday and Scaffold Pike in England yesterday uh, unfortunately due to the severe weather warnings that snowed in Wales the boys were advised to reschedule today's hike Alhamdulillah, that was amazing feed me Allah bless all of you. Uh, who went? Show of hands. Nudwan? Hafiz Yasin here. Shakir. MashaAllah Ridwan. And the rest of me Allah bless all of you, MashaAllah. Uh, those who do want to donate, inshallah, you can see any of those brothers, myself, any of the uh, members, inshallah, committee members. May Allah bless all of you for your donations and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our project. A success, inshallah. Uh, may, inshallah, this project be a means of uh, continuous charity for all of us, inshallah. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Alhamdulillah, we have great ulama in our presence, in our midst. MashaAllah, we have Hazrat Qibla, Khalifa Sayyidi Murshid Taj Sharia, Khalifa Huzur Sayyidi Sarkar Muhaddith Kabir, Hazrat Allama Mufti Zahid Hussain Sahab Qibla, Dhamad Barakatum Qudsiya. And with them, alhamdulillah, all the way from uh, Maryland, USA. Maryland? Well, I knew Maryland from when I was a child. Maryland? Cookies. Subhanallah. But is that where it comes from, by the way? Chalo, Jobi ho. But has this come from Maryland, the, the place, alhamdulillah, you in, in the US? MashaAllah. Um, a very learned scholar, young, talented. Uh, scholar of Islam, mashallah, who is also the Khalifa of the Chief Supreme Judge of the Indian Subcontinent, the Janashin, true representative of Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia Ali Rahmat Rudwan, Huzur Qaid Millat, Hazrat Qibla Sayyidi Ashad Mia Saab, Damat Barakatum Qudsi, he's the Khalifa of Hazrat Hazrat has conferred uh, Khilafah to, mashallah, uh, Hazrat Sheikh. Sayyid Abdul Samad Saab Qibla. He's from the Ahlul Bayt, the skin of the prophetic household. Subhanallah. And he's from the descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without any uh, further ado, inshallah, we'd like to request Hazrat, inshallah, to please, inshallah, come on the mic and illuminate our hearts with uh, his blessed speech. Nare takbir, nare risalat, ulamai ahl sunnat, fazane ahl bayt. The <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi wahda. Wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da. Amma ba'd. Fa'awudh billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم وقال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم منبع العلم والحلم والحكم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have all gathered here in this blessed gathering in the company of these scholars of Islam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming to this blessed gathering and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of blessings for us. Because this is a gathering of Mawlid, I recited the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the purpose of sending Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam unto this world. And not only the purpose of this world, rather the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses here is alameen. Meaning this world, the next world, any time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we did not send you except as a mercy for all of creation. For all of the worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this regarding his beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he sent the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam unto this world. You will see the status and rank in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him and sent him unto this world. You will see his status. You will see his rank. In all of the protocol that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged for the arrival of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost, we find a narration in which Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam himself states, Awwalu ma khalaqallahu nuri. That the first creation, the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was my nur, it was my light. And then we find that in human form, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating the first individual in human form, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. And when Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, this first human being, when he is making dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uses the wasila or the means of Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And at this time, he is asked how he recognizes this name. And Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he responds, that lamma khalaqtani bi yadik wa nafakhta fiya min ruhik farafa'atu ra'si فَرَأَيْتُ عَلَىٰ قَوَائِمِ الْعَرْشِ مَكْتُوبًا لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ مُحَمَّدُ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهُ He says that, O oh Allah, when you created me and you put the soul inside of me, I rose my head, I picked up my head, and I saw written on the pillars of the arsh or on the foundation of the arsh of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it was written La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and then he says فَعَلِمْتُ أَنَّكَ لَمْ تُدِفْ إِلَىٰ إِسْمِكَ إِلَّا أَحَبَّ الْخَلْقِ إِلَيْكَ from this point I learned or I knew right from then you would not connect with your name anyone's name except he who is most beloved to you so then Sayyiduna Adam at this time he has told Sadaqta Ya Adam You have told the truth O Adam Innahu la ahabbul khalqi ilayha Ilayya He is definitely the most beloved of all creation to, to me Walaw lahu Or walaw la Muhammad Lama khalaqtuka I would not have even created you This is what Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam has told at this time Allahu Akbar when Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he is put onto earth. We are seeing again the protocol granted to Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his arrival onto this earth. From the beginning, 
of human history, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had started to express or make manifest the status or the rank of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So when Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he came unto this earth and he, his blessed wife was Sayyidatuna Hawwa radiallahu ta'ala anha. With Sayyidatuna Hawwa radiallahu ta'ala anha, Al-Allama Al-Imam Yusuf An-Nibhani rahimahullahu ta'ala, he states that they together had 40 children. They had 40 children together, but they were born in 20 pregnancies. Meaning, Sayyidatuna Hawwa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she gave, to tw she gave birth to two children at a time, to twins. But that child of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, into whom the nur, the light of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to be transferred, he was born without a twin. And Sayyiduna Sheith alayhi salam, he was born without a twin, without a match, to show the status and rank of that individual who bears the light of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And then when Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, his time is coming close to reveal his physical appearance unto the world, we find many narrations regarding the feelings of his blessed mother, the rank of his blessed father. We find many things about when Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to be born unto this world, all of the matters and all of the darkness that was in the world at that time. And we learn that Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he came to this world. He eradicated those darknesses. Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was that glowing light in all of that darkness. That was this world. And then Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam, there is a narration in which Sayyiduna Jibreel Amin alayhi salam, he states that قَلَّبْتُ مَغَارِبَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَشَارِقَهَا فَلَمْ أَرَى رَجُلًا أَفْضَلَ مِنْ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam, he is saying that I have searched and the word that he is using here, he is saying قَلَّبْتُ This means to turn inside out. He looked under, he looked above, he looked all over, he searched as hard as he could. فَلَمْ أَرَى رَجُلًا أَفْضَلَ مِنْ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ But despite his efforts, he was unable to find anyone who had a higher rank than Sayyiduna Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. This was Sayyiduna Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم coming unto this world. But imagine a time in which we are all gathered to answer for our deeds in front of the ultimate judge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without any comparison, if one of us goes to court today, for something that we know that if we try hard enough, we can get off. If we hire a nice lawyer, even if we did the act, even if we committed the crime, we know that we can probably get off if we have a good enough legal team. But despite the fact that we have a bit of confidence in the fact that maybe we'll get off. And when we stand in the court of that judge today, we stand in such a situation that the lighting is absolutely perfect, the temperature in the room that we're held in, it's absolutely fine, the air conditioning is running. But despite all this, we feel nervous. We feel fear. And we're sweating despite the air conditioning running at that time. But then imagine a time without comparison that you are standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are standing in front of the one or to answer to the one who knows about everything that you have said, regarding everything that you have done and every thought that has even passed above your heart or through your hearts. You are standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows everything that you did. And you do not feel as if there is any chance that you can get off or there is any chance that you can prove that you have not done the actions that you actually have done. So in this manner, you are standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this mindset, in this state of heart, you are standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to all of those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
will tell you that you have done. And you will have no response because you know that you have done those things. You know that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the means of the angels, everything that is told to you that you have done, you will have done those things. But then on this same day, when you know that there's no getting off easy, whereas in the world, when you are standing in the court of the world, the temperature is controlled, the climate is controlled, but at this time, the day of Qiyamah, when we are standing to answer for our deeds in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sun will be so close that some narrations they mention that they will be at the distance of two bows. Right now the sun is millions of miles away. The sun is millions of miles away, but despite this, some days we feel that they are so hot that we cannot even stand on the roads and we have to run. We have to run so that we can stand on the grass and our feet can be cool on the grass. But on this day the sun is only the distance of two bows and some narrations they say that it will be at the distance of one meal. At the distance of one meal. And the Ravi, the narrator, he says that I do not know whether this meal is the meal of distance or if this meal is in reference to that applicator which is put into the container of surma. That container of surma, when we take it out and we put that applicator, we use that applicator to apply that surma on our eyes. He says, I do not know if this is the dis distance or if it's the distance of one mile that we use for distance. So this is how close the sun is. And at this time, is it possible that we run to some grass, that we run to such a place that our feet are not burning? This is not the case at that time because the entire floor at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have made that of copper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have made that of copper. It's all copper. So everywhere you are standing, no matter where you stand, you are feeling the heat of that floor. And that heat is being felt so much so that the narrations, they also say that the hearts will begin to boil. The minds, the brains will begin to boil. The hearts will boil in such a manner that they will begin to come to the, to the throats. According to the sins of the people, the people will be sweating. Some people, they're sweating so much so that their sweat gathers, their own sweat gathers and it reaches their ankles. Some people are sweating so much that their own sweat gathers and reaches their knees. Some people are sweating so much because of their sins that their sweat reaches their, their own waist, their shoulders. And some people who are big sinners, who are great sinners, those individuals will be diving in their own sweat. This will be the state of heat on that day. And despite all of this, feeling all of this, there will come a time in which Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam will be told, O oh Adam, separate those people who are going to Jannah from those people who are going to hell. From those people who are going to the fire. And Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he will ask, How many from how many? Meaning, how many people do I separate? And how many people do I leave? And Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he will be told that 999 people from 1,000 people separate those people, those 999 will be going to hell and one of those thousand will be going to Jannah. Upon hearing this, all of creation, all of the people, even the young individuals due to the stress, due to the worry, the anxiety that they are feeling on this day, the young people will turn old. The young people will turn old. And this day is so long. This day is so long and when about half of it, when people are just standing in this state, people are just standing fearing what is going to happen to them. Fearing their accounts. Mufti Nisar sahab. They are fearing what is going to happen to them. They are fearing how they will answer for all of those deeds that they have done. And at this time they will think 
that there is something that we need to do. About half of this day passes. I believe the narrations say that this day is equal to about 50,000 years. This one day is equal to 50,000 years. And after the time of 25,000 years passes, the people, they will begin to think that we have to do something about this. We have to do something. We have been waiting so long in this state of stress, in this state of anxiety, that now the people are just wanting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take their accounts. If they are going to hell, then they be told that they are going to hell. If they are going to Jannah, then they be told that they are going to Jannah, but they cannot deal with this stress anymore. They cannot deal with this anxiety anymore of not knowing what is going to happen to me. So then they think that Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he is the first human creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is Abu al-Bashar. He is the father of all humankind. So let's go into the court of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam and let's see if there is anything that he can do about this. They reach the court of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. And they address Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam and they say that, O oh Adam, you are Abu al-Bashar, you are the father of all mankind. And they are expecting that because Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam has this father and son relationship with the people, that maybe he will be able to do something because you know that any father, if they see their children going through distress, they automatically, they feel a reflex in which they have to do something to protect their own child. So they are coming to the court of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam expecting this mercy of a father. And they are saying that you are our father, you are Abu al-Bashar, you are father of all mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept you in Jannah. You are a person of much status, of much rank. Do you not see our distress? Do you not see what we are going through? And at this time, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he will say, لَمْ يَهُمُّنِ الْيَوْمَ إِلَّا أَنَّا رَبِّ قَدْ غَدِبَ الْيَوْمَ لَمْ يَغْدَبْ قَبْلَهُ مِثْلَهُ وَلَنْ يَغْدَبَ بَعْدَهُ مِثْلَهُ نَفْسِي 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 إِذْهَبُوا إِلَى غَيْرِ Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, these people they came with some hope to the court of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. And they expected that if they complained to Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, they will receive some kind of mercy from his courts. But Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam is saying to them at this point, that nothing bothers me today. Nothing worries me today except for the fact that my Lord has expressed so much wrath on this day that He has never expressed this much wrath before this nor will He ever express this much wrath after this. And He says at this point, Nafsi, 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 idhabu ila ghayri. He is saying, myself, 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 go to someone else. Now the people, they will become disappointed and they will ask Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam that if not you, then who should we go to? So Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, he will say that Nuh, he is the second father of mankind. Sayyiduna Nuh, he is the second father of mankind and Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam will command the people to approach him. Go to the court of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. When they've reached the court of Sayyiduna, Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam at this point, they will say to him the same things. They will praise him, they will remind him or they will remind themselves of the status and rank of Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam. And they will say, O oh Nuh, O oh Sayyiduna, Nuh, you are the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted your dua in such a way that he left not a sign of kuffar, not a sign of disbelievers on this earth. You are who is referred to as Abdun Shakur. You are the grateful servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your status. This is your rank. Do you not see the distress that we are facing on this day? So then Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam will say the same words. لَمْ يَهُمُّنِ الْيَوْمَ إِلَّا أَنَّا رَبِّ قَدْ غَدِبَ الْيَوْمَ لَمْ يَغْدَبْ قَبْلَهُ مِثْلَهُ وَلَنْ يَغْدَبَ بَعْدَهُ مِثْلَهُ نَفْسِي 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 إِذْهَبُوا إِلَى غَيْرِ Nothing worries me today except for the fact 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expressing so much wrath that He has never expressed this type of wrath before nor will He ever express this level of wrath ever again. I am not worried about anyone except for myself. Nafsi, 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 idhabu ila ghayri, go to someone else. Facing this disappointment again, the people will ask him, who do you send us to? And by him they are sent to Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now the name Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam bears, it is made up of two words, ab and rahim. It is made up of the two words, ab and rahim, which means it's self-merciful father. Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, we have seen in his stories and his waqiat, the mercy that he bears. And Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam, when the people come to him, he will say and repeat the same words as before. The same words as the, as the other anbiya kiram those great individuals, the greatest creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will say that nothing worries me today except for the wrath that Allah is expressing today. Nafsi, 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 idhabu ila ghayri. Now every single time, the people that are being pushed from court to court, sent from one person to another, their confidence gets lower and lower. So Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam sends them to the court of Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam. Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam sends them into the court of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam. And the confidence at this point has absolutely went down. It has decreased. And when they come into the court of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, they say the praise of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam. Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, he will say, Nafsi, 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 idhabu ila ghayri, that I'm worried about myself today, go to someone else. Now they ask, who do you send us to? Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam will then respond, Eetu abdan, fatahallahu ala yadayhi, wa yaji'u fi hadha al yawmi amina. Go to such a person upon whose hands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the opening. And he has come into this day fearless. Eetu Muhammada sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the people after being pushed from court to court, from one person to another, they have been disappointed so many times, they are expecting that we are going to face possibly disappointment once again. And they reach the court of Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. When they reach his court, and they complain to Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They find a response that they had not heard yet on this day. And he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ana sahibukum wa ana laha. He says, I am the one that you have been looking for and I have been given this responsibility. Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He will then prostrate in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world, he had been told, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And soon, you will be given so much that you will be pleased. Upon hearing this revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَنْ if that's the case, La Arda wa Wahidum Mim Ummati Finnar. He says, I will never be pleased even if one of my followers is in the fire. And Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, at this time he will intercede for the people. And in one way, you can see that the intercession is absolutely common for all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how is this the case? Because all of the people, they had been waiting in anxiety, in distress, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take my account. And even those people who will be going to the fire, they will receive the barakat, the blessings of the shafa'ah, the intercession of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that their account will now be taken and they can go and they can face their punishment at this point. Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, this is his intercession. This is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him on the day of Qiyamah. But the question remains that if this is the case, then the people who have heard 
these narrations, why do not they just go directly to the court of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And everyone is probably thinking that I'll go directly to Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'll skip the process and go directly to Sayyiduna Rasulullah from whom we expect all of the blessings that we have. Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, why not? So the ulama, the scholars of Islam, they say to show the honor and rank of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are told these narrations in this world, but in the next world we will be forgotten these narrations. We will have forgotten these narrations so that the entire universe, so that the entire creation can see the rank and the status of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They will see that the people tried to go to Sayyiduna Adam, they tried to go to Sayyiduna Nuh, they tried all of their ways, but the way which was successful was the way and the path of the love of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This will be shown on the day of Qiyamah and that is why Huzur ustad zaman Shahin shah sukhan Maulana Hassan alayhi rahma he says, فَقَدْ اِتْنَا سَبَبْ هَا اِنْ اِقَادِ بَزْمِ مَحْشَرْكَ this is the status and rank of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states, Shafa'ati haqqun. My intercession is true. فَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِهَا لَمْ يَكُنْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا So he who does not believe in my intercession, he will not be deserving of my intercession. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us amongst those who believe in the intercession of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and allow us to reach Jannah by his means. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina